Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Planet Coaster and of course, Cadnam Castle. Now this week we get to fight over two coaster types that are pretty much identical, but it doesn't matter which one it is because they're kid friendly, packed full of airtime, themed and fun to ride. Is it an Interman? Is it a Mac? Oh, let's just call it a Mega Coaster Light. Oh, you guys, I'm sure this one's going to leave some of you throffing at the keyboard this week. And why? Well, Planet Coaster doesn't have either the Interman Megalite or the Mac Mega Coasters, which, by the way, it's really difficult to get them the right way around. <laughs> you kind of got to fudge it with the game a little bit. So this week, we're going to be taking inspiration from Alpina Blitz at Negloland, which, by the way, you've got to be really careful how you say that one. Uh, that, by the way, is the Mac Mega Coaster. And then Piratan at Jaws Summerland. That's the Interman Megalite and also probably said quite incorrectly, but I don't care. It's fine now they're pretty much the same layout they are just mirrors of each other and then this this is ours so you'll see a lot of similarities now what i've done in the game is i've just used the interman giga uh, it's supposed to be a giga it's cable lift the brake runs all wrong it's just all variations of wrong and it's going to upset some of the purists amongst you but i don't care it is what it is <laughs> and actually having it as the cable lift kind of makes it work in the end and i'll talk about that in a moment but this is what we've got so we've got the station run here uh, and then we go into the cable lift uh, lift hill and then it comes into the first drop it's not a steep first drop remember kids go on this ride and it's supposed to be aimed at kids so we're going for that we come into the first uh, corner this way and it comes around by the queue line and then into the first airtime hill and then into like a, a bit of a dive turn so this is pretty much alpina blitz if you've ever if you've ever seen it right but now we start to get a little bit different from here so we go into an overpass over the top of the station uh, or overbanked pass should i say and then into an airtime hill by the way this is pretty much airtime turn airtime turn because <laughs> we come into a turn here into an airtime turn uh, and then into airtime into a turn into airtime into a turn and then into the brake run so it'll do i mean I quite like the layout of this, to be fair. It came together quite nicely. It rides quite nicely, too. Yeah, that's what she said. Uh, so, I like it. In terms of the queue line, um, what I've done is I've done this uh, loopy type queue line. So, we've got one that loops around here, and then it comes down this way. It loops around this way, and then down into here. The reason I've done loops, by the way, is because they can be closed off on quiet days but because this coaster is not a capacity machine in the slightest it's going to attract quite a queue uh, so yeah that's what i've got here i've got like a bit of an extended queue so this is a little bit longer than the woody and the uh, booster bikes queue but that's because the capacity on this is trash um which by the way these coasters are not capacity machines in any way shape or form like Alp alpina oh what is it even called alpina blitz uh <laughs> it's only got four trains so that's 16 people i've decided to go for five um the the intimans sort of like can do that if if you like now the reason for the cable lift hill of course is because it's it's in game but it also means that it forces the train to not be able to leave until the brake run is clear here um as opposed to being able to go up the lift hill and i wanted to do that because i wanted to force the capacity um and it means that if the game tries to make the train leave the station early it can't because the whole thing is blocked so this is what i wanted to do just to sort of like keep it in the station keep it feeling a little bit real because this is what these coasters do they take quite a bit of time to check and whatever so uh, check the restraints i mean so in terms of color schemes i've gone for yellow and brown and no Guys, it's not because I'm trying to steal Storm Chaser. <laughs> it's because we're going for an adventure area. Um, so we've got a couple of supporting rides here. I've got the uh, Star Flyer. I've got the Rising Raptor. The Golden Eagle. I don't remember which way around they are. Oh, it's, do you know what? This is just going to be an episode of getting all this stuff the wrong way around. And then, of course, you've got the Insanity that's in here. So this is the, uh, this is the area here. I'm going to have some supporting some supporting shops that are going on here. Um, and then, of course, it's all going to be adventure themed. And then the actual uh, access is going to be from this point here and then this point here. Now, you may have spotted a shadow that you've not seen before. And that's because I'm starting to uh, plan out the rest of the park. Don't look at the palette of stuff that's over here. That's uh, that's for future endeavors. Let's just move away. Um yeah, so I started to plan out the rest of the park here, and that's because all of the coasters in this park are already in. I have just hidden them. Hmm. Anyway, back to this week's episode. I'll see you in a minute. Gather around adventurers because this is coming together so nicely. I absolutely love it. It's adventure. It's Gardaland. It's very yellow. <laughs> 
by me. Storm Chaser has told us that yellow coasters can work in an area. So that's what we're going for here, and I love it. And it's that whole um, Asian temple vibe that we've got going on. I mean, it, this is an area that does have to be overgrown for it to come to life. Have a look at the Jungle Rapids of Guard Land on opening day versus now. You'll see that it's just got a completely different personality. So, of course, where we've got a lot of mud and stuff at the moment, this is going to be very lush, overgrown bamboo and, and whatever. But this is just coming together so amazing. I mean, I know it's half done. It's halfway through the episode and already I'm loving, I'm loving it. I mean, over in the queue line, this is all of the work that I've done here. You'll be forgiven for thinking Thinking that you've seen these buildings before, you kind of have. These are upcycled from Grosvenor Gardens, so I've dragged them in from there and I've changed them and I've just placed them down. And of course, at the moment, in isolation, without any kind of foliage and stuff, they look a bit crappy sitting here, don't they? They're like very just there. <laughs> they don't fit into the environment, but they will do. I promise. I promise they will do. Um, so you'll see that they've. There's a lot of. Jungle Rapids inspiration going on here because that's just like the best use of this temple theme that is in Planet Coaster that I, I've seen and I don't know anywhere else to get my references from. So stuff like this, for example, it's pulled together based on the Rapids ride, but it sits quite nicely in this area of the park. And I mean, this isn't the only place that this appears. It appears in uh, other areas of the queue as well, like for example, uh, here. And then there's a couple of other places. So again, when this is all overgrown and stuff, you won't really notice that it's a carbon copy. It will just, it will just work. Um, and in the rest of the queue line then, I have just put all of these extra pillars and stuff in. I mean, I wasn't sold on them to start with. They do look a bit jank, but again, they're going to make sense when the area is overgrown. So just trust me, it will. <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself here because I haven't done it yet. and I don't know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> so anyway, the queue line area. Um, I've done lots and lots of work here. I've decided to go for open pebble for a lot of the ride area. So that I've got a very clear distinction between what's queue line area, what's overgrown and what needs to be kept because it's uh, accessible or access is needed so like for example this turnaround here and this turnaround here i've kept it very uh, very pebbly very openly open i think it will have a little bit of overgrowth going on because this is a relatively old ride but um it's not going to be overgrown not like you've seen in in other stuff so in terms of the actual area itself then i've started to give the main pathway a bit of a personality um i wanted it to have the the feeling of the temple vibe and stuff going along here so you know that there is the adventure area the other side and then it starts to merge a little bit into the road area and then of course you've got the western area in the back so i'm starting to think about how these three areas gel together even though they are very very different themes and this is the best way that uh, that i've thought of doing it so of course we've got all of the path lining and stuff that's going along here giving it a little bit of a spruce up with some wavy lines and stuff so it's just not a straight line and i quite like how this is turning out actually again when it's going to be overgrown and stuff it's going to look all right uh, so the rides have all got queue line fences and stuff in here so the insanity ride um oh i've closed the insanity ride because i've had to redo the queue line i just need to reopen that um so yeah that's all here and then i just put this high fence in just to hide the two areas from each other so we've now got an actual uh, an actual partition i mean it's not a tall fence it doesn't need to be a tall fence but it just now has to be some kind of separating feature then over this side i've decided to put an entrance archway in i don't often do this but it just felt like this needed an entrance archway whereas the main entrance doesn't and this entrance uh, archway is actually a play on the queue line entrance that I've put in so this is how the uh, the, the actual coaster queue looks like um, I'm still toying with the idea of whether I'm going to put effects and stuff in here it feels like it might have some, some kind of steam or whatever going on I don't know yet let's see what uh, let's see what happens right I've just put a load of other temple stuff around the around the queue line. I mean, I, I know we've talked about this already, but the temple stuff then carries on throughout the rest of the area just to give it a bit of life. The pad for this uh, Rising Raptor Golden Eagle, which one, whichever one it is, uh, looks a bit weird. Again, it's going to look all right when it's overgrown, but right now it looks a bit weird. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> the shop then, uh, I've started to give this a bit of a personality. I mean, there's not much of a personality on it at the moment, but if you remember back to the Grosvenor Gardens shops uh, at the entrance area, it's going to be a very similar in that aspect. I mean, there's a bit of the western area that is still poking through the top here, so I just need to find a way of trying to hide it as much as I can without going too OTT. 
So we'll find a way of doing that. There'll be stuff on the roof. Again, Jungle Rapids at Gardaland has got the shops and stuff that give this the perfect the perfect image and whatever. So we'll go for uh, we'll go for that. And then over this way, Outpost Ten, I think it's called at uh, Paulton's Park. We're just coming for you, straight for you. Um, I love how it uh, I love how it looks. So I've done a bit of a variation of this in here. Obviously, Outpost Ten is a uh, an actual shop that you can go in, whereas this isn't. This is a, a fronted shop, but it's it looks all right. It looks cool. Uh, I try to hide the maintenance shed as much as I can, so keep keeping it consistent. Uh, consistent in here not much is done in here yet I do need to uh, sort my life out and sort my mess out I mean I've just started to think about how how this is going to work and I have put the the entrance on the side here and then I've just fenced off the uh, maintenance area and the transfer tracks and stuff so it's what it is and I know that coasters don't have transfer tracks in the maintenance shed but oh, how are you gonna know otherwise just deal with it. Um, <laughs> station then, nothing is done inside the station here. I've got a couple of ideas, but I need to uh, I need to flesh it out and play it out first. However, what I have done for the first time, and this is like, a no I don't normally do it this way around, but I've kind of finished the external of the station building because that's where I was inspired to work. And again, you've seen this in Gardaland. It was used on the um, cascade that I did. And I'm just reusing it as a slightly different, a slightly different form. It just felt like this was the perfect station building for this area, so uh, that's what I'm going for. Particularly as it's tall enough that you can actually interact with it as the train goes past this curve here. Uh, I am still toying with the idea of possibly having an effect here. You know, it might blow steam or smoke or something at you. Uh, definitely not fire. That's not going to happen. That's not realistic. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. We'll we'll uh, we'll see. I need to uh, I need to play it out. But ultimately, this is the uh, this is the station building as it's looking, and I'm I like it. Like it's coming together. It's coming together real nicely. So and there's the turnaround there. Yes. <sighs> love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So this is how we are looking from the top. I mean, there's still lots of work to do, but you can see there's already lots of work that's been done. So without further ado, may I present to you the finished article. Here we go. Oh yes, you guys, here is the finished article. Please welcome to the park. Cobra Cove, because we love our alliteration. I think it's going to continue, right? It's Pirates next. I don't know what I'm going to call the, the area, <laughs> but it's fine. And you won't be surprised to know that Foley just made the area come to life as well. We always knew that was going to be the case. Uh, it was going to be an overgrown jungle, but guys, it really does make the difference. This is the area from the top then. I love how this has turned out like so much better than I thought this, this area would be. Like It's supposed to be an established ride, so it's supposed to be quite overgrown and stuff, but hey, yeah, it's is looking good i did uh, end up changing some of the configuration of this area down here there were originally these trees and stuff and it kind of enclosed the area a little bit too much i wanted there to be this like open space here for you to be able to see the first drop the first turn and the first airtime hill i mean as you can see the the train going up the lift hill now it's a pretty spectacular sight and i think to be honest we might be leaving the the principal of Poulton's behind because this is going to be quite an expensive ride <laughs> Like, let's not lie about this. It's quite a bit of money that's been spent on here, but guys, it's been totally, totally worth it. I mean, when you look down this area and you look through the jungle, ah, oh, it's just like an adventure. And it's exactly as I wanted it to feel. Like, the queue line here goes all the way through this jungle and it's all overgrown and it's all like through here and I love it like even down to the the queue line fences that like, I didn't know if it was going to work with the don't die fencing directly opposite the queue I thought it was going to be a bit claustrophobic but actually no it works like it works really 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 nicely in fact it's really quite difficult to get a decent shot to talk you through like there's so much to see <laughs> it's like quite frustrating um i've done some custom supporting this has always been in the custom supports have been in since the very beginning of the coaster because i needed to know how it's all going to fit in terms of pathing and whatever so this is all done and i've tidied up the rest of the supports as well so uh yeah and the ones that are sticking through here i've checked these out that's exactly how it would be irl so um we're we're good to go we're good to go with that aspect and do you remember when I was talking about all this temple stuff that was just sticking out of nowhere like these were just sticking out of nowhere and I promised it was going to make sense with all of the foliage and stuff. Yep, I, I promised you it was going to. I kind of knew it was because I use trees and stuff to hide my misdemeanors all the time. <laughs> like trees are your friend when your park is looking a bit jank. Uh, so yeah, this is what I've done here. And to get this effect, by the way, this is like 
five or six different trees in game to actually make it work. So you've got the, the dead swamp tree, you've got the oak tree, the beech tree, the uh, Brazil tree. You've got a couple of pines going, not pines, sorry, palms going on. And there's one, cap 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 <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's the other one. It's the other tree. But yeah, it makes it make sense. And you sort of layer them together. There is no technique, by the way. It's all to do with randomness when it comes to nature. So I can't say, oh, do this and it's going to look right. You just have to throw them all together and just go go by your eye and see what happens. But yeah, this is all of the stuff that's uh, that's sitting quite nicely on the uh, on the site line in terms of temple. It's all forgotten. It's all forbidden. And it's, and it's all there. Uh, I love it. I love it. And like the station building has come together quite nicely. I decided not to do any kind of effects on the top here um, because I kind of thought, well, we haven't put effects on the booster bikes. We haven't put effects on the GCI. So I don't think we would here either so i've just kept it i've just kept it as it is um and we're starting to get into the realms of this being quite a high prestige coaster so no station wise then i've just kitted out and decorated inside here it's nothing special and it's not supposed to be anything special it's supposed to be lightly themed because of budget and we've kind of broken that broken that principle but it's all right it's got your usual stuff it's got your row numbers you've got your baggage holds you've got your push points you've got your stuff you've got your your console and, and whatever so it, it's it is what it is. It's on a similar par to the likes of Storm Chaser and, and whatever. So then we've got the maintenance shed. Uh, so I've done some work in here. Come on. There we go. Done some work in here. Just made it nice and simple. Um, I think we need to conserve peace count for, for some, sort of <laughs> some sort of effect. But it is a two-level jobber. So you've got um, the entrance down the bottom here. And then you've just got like storage and electric boxes and stuff. Okay, done that. There we go. Uh, electric boxes and stuff down on the lower floor. And then, of course, you've got the maintenance area in the uh, top end. There we go. And coming out this way. Come on, what's my, cam what's my camera locked to? There we go. Uh, coming out this way, I've just put in the concrete pathway. Now, I haven't brought it around this way because we need to have a service area for our dark ride at some point. And I don't quite know how that service area is going to be. So I've not put this round here. And of course, there'll be an access road that comes through this way. So watch this space. Future me's, uh, future me's problem. So the rest of the area then. Look what's made a return. Oh, that's a tree. <laughs> look what's made a return. Trees to the channel. Uh, <laughs> we got a splash pad. I felt like this park, because it's aimed at kids, would also have like play areas and areas to explore that aren't rides. So like more experiencey type stuff. We've not really done that yet. I mean, we kind of did it with the um, stuff in the uh, in the road area, the race area. God, my memory. Covid, by the way, it really does ruin you. Um, so I thought, yeah, this would have kind of a splash pad, and then in future areas we're going to have things like playgrounds and whatever just for something that the kids don't have to queue for so this feels this feels about right slightly different to how we did it in Grosvenor Gardens but yeah I, I like it and it sits quite nicely on the sight line too it sort of like sits right in the middle it's you can avoid it if you want to but you hit it square on it was by the way originally down here and I thought actually I need a seating area for all of these shops and whatever so I swapped them around because it felt like that was that would make more make more sense so this is the um Flower beds and stuff that I wanted to put in here. I've decided not to use fencing. I think these flower beds would be a big enough barrier to stop people from walking through and climbing up and over and stuff. So this would still protect you quite nicely. So uh, I quite like how this sits in the middle, actually. I quite like how it's a feature, how it's a bit of a focal point of the, uh, of the, whole, uh, of the whole area. And, of course, we've got Insanity over here. Uh, so this is looking pretty decent. I mean, it's as good as I wanted it to be. Of course, it's got no name yet, but... Um, it's fine. Like, this just sits quite nicely there. It's our thrill ride for the area. The older kids will be able to go on that, so we are good to go. Uh, there we go. Then we've got Outpost. I decided not to do much more with this, you know. I kind of quite liked it, how it was a little bit bare, a little bit bland. I might come back and do a repass on some signage and stuff, but I'm all right with it as it is. Like, I don't... I think sometimes minimal needs to talk for itself. You need to let the, the area breathe. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. But I'm sure I'll come back and <laughs> regret that decision at some point, as I <laughs> frequently do. So watch this space. However, this is where the effort has been put in. Base camp. Look at this. Look at this. It's just a row of shops. It's just a row of food units and stuff. But guys, oh, yeah. I mean, it's inspired by Grosvenor Gardens shop. But I always wanted to have something that was similar to Grosvenor Gardens. Uh, and now, of course, we've got the plane there. It's hiding all of the Western stuff in the background. So it's good enough for me. I'll take it. Like, yes. 
and there's base camp and there is just all of the stuff again it's taken that inspiration from Gardaland and Grover Gardens as I said uh, now outside the back here I've continued the overgrown theme but what I've done is I've tried to mix it up with the stuff that you would have found in the western area so it kind of blends but doesn't blend at the same time so that's what we're going for here but ultimately what we're trying to do is hide the building from the other side <laughs> so I think we, we kind of do it you kind of do it well enough you're never going to get uh, complete sight lines hmm that's contentious isn't it with the stuff that's uh, <laughs> going on with Super Mario Land and Universal oh drama anyway uh, so what else is there to show you? Oh yeah, the um, the, the the rising raptor golden eagle, whichever one it is. So this is the queue line area. Love the queue line area and how that's turned out. That's so much better now that the path covers and stuff are on here. And then of course this is how it looks on the uh, on the sight line. And I've just thrown a couple of the more temple-y type stuff just down because it makes it uh, it makes it consistent and stuff. And by the way, when you start looking at it from this sort of perspective, it's it's turning into a theme park. Like, it really is. But I'm starting, as I said, I'm starting to think that we're leaving Portland's behind a little bit and we're starting to get a bit heavier on the themes. And I'm all right with that because I'm enjoying doing this. And when we get the pirate stuff in this this area here and finish off this area, it's going to look it's gonna look pretty, pretty decent. So, as you know, I'm recording all of this in advance. We don't have a name for this yet. So I think it's probably time that I cut to myself in the future to talk to me in the past about something that happened in my future's past anyway here he is oh you guys that's like some kind of weird inception i don't think i can deal with that it's just too much to look back on <laughs> anyway coming to you from the future we do have a name it's relic raider so thank you so much to mitch 8404 you're back on the channel my friend well done for winning the vote uh, just to remind you i don't look at who submits the names i just write the names down and put it to the vote and then i worry about who submitted it so it's pure coincidence that the same people keep appearing it's not like some kind of weird conspiracy i promise <laughs> there is already a coaster in the park for next week this is what it looks like so it is a water coaster we need names in the comments please guys it's a proper aqua tracks a little bit like uh, kraken expedition no uh the other one Kr uh, krampus expedition <laughs> oh man it's too late it's too late in december to be doing this i'm just going to bed so guys thank you so much for getting to the end of the episode i really do appreciate it of course if you do like the video you know what to do to help the algorithm there's a like button and a comment button and a subscribe button if you're so inclined uh but guys until we speak again please look after yourselves take care bye bye let's go for a ride